Hi there, I'm Cass Stoffel and you are listening to Empowered Marketing Unleashed. I believe that marketing and growing a business is easy and I am here to show you the simple steps. We'll cover everything from marketing channels and crafting compelling content to designing irresistible offers and nailing your pricing. Plus, we'll delve into the mindset and strategies you need to elevate your business and have expert interviews with entrepreneurs who are leading the way. I'll share the kind of knowledge that transforms businesses from invisible to unstoppable. So my friend, are you ready to get started? Let's empower your marketing. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today, we are covering a topic that is so important in 2024. I am hearing a lot in the marketplace, people saying that I'm not getting enough clients. I'm not getting enough traction. I don't seem to be building an audience. I don't have enough engagement. And there is something underlying all of this that can improve all of those elements for you. And that is your personal brand. In 2024, Building a personal brand is more important than it has ever been before. We have seen a resurgence of personal connection. We are seeing things like workshops and retreats selling out again. People want to know who they're working with and they want personal connection with those people. That is why in 2024, you really need to build out your personal brand. People work with people that they know. People buy from people that they know. And that is why you need to create your business in a way that it is a brand in its own right. Now, let's not get this confused. Often people think that I have a brand, I have a domain name, I have a website, I have a logo. Yes, you may have all of those things, but it still may not be a personal brand. You need to think about your personal brand as more than just the colors in your logo, more than just the hero statement on your website. Your personal brand these days needs to embody you, who you are, what you do, and why you do it. The reason it needs to embody those things is so potential clients can see you. They can align with you and go, yep, I agree with that statement. I feel the same way. They sound like they're talking just to me. So today we are going to talk about a personal brand and I'm going to give you three simple steps to start you on the path to building your own personal brand that stands out and attracts the right clients. So before we dive into the steps, why do we want to create this personal brand? Well, I've given you a little bit of a a teaser into that. There's a few main reasons. Firstly, you are trying to build a business and you are trying to build a business that is at least partially online, if not fully online. In an online marketplace where it is saturated, there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there and there are going to be thousands of people who could service the same clients that you do. So you need to stand out. The way you do this is through your personal brand. People are Googling for help in a certain topic. They're not looking for someone with a certain modality, a certain practitioner, a certain qualification. So you need to build a brand around the people that you help and how you help them. Build a brand around that transformation that you offer. That's the foundational element of your brand. Having a really clear personal brand will do a couple of things for you. One, it will help you to stand out and to stand out as the expert. Two, It helps you build a loyal audience. People can see you. They can align with your values and your authenticity. And that's really important. It's a big reason why some entrepreneurs you see online seem to come out of nowhere and create success really, really quickly. And others seem to struggle. It's because they come out, they show who they are, they stand up, they get seen, and people can stand behind that and go, yes, I support you. I want to be part of that. So you can see there how it's also probably the reason why a lot of entrepreneurs are struggling to get seen and to stand out because they haven't nailed that art of a personal brand. Let's dive into the simple steps, three simple steps that you can take right now that will help to improve your business by creating your own personal brand. Number one, you need to show who you are. And how you do this is by sharing your passion, share your purpose, share your why. You need to tell people why you do this, why you are so motivated to help them. That allows them to see you in a whole new light. When you know your why and you can share it through your messaging, it starts to curate 
an audience of people who are interested and passionate about the same thing you are. So when you are using this in your messaging, you can use it a number of different ways, but remember to share messaging around, I'm really passionate about helping people with X, Y, Z because I got into this field because I wanted to improve the lives of people that have da, da, da. I am really passionate about this because I experienced it myself. So share with people the drive and the passion behind what you do, and they can line up with that. I find it really interesting because this always happens in my world. When I had my natural health clinic, I shared openly about the health challenges that I had. And many clients would come to me and they would sit in their first appointment and they would say to me, I read your blog about your health history and you sounded just like me. And that's how I knew that you could help me. And then again, in this business, and even as recently as yesterday, I had a discovery call with a client who said, I read your email and I felt like you were talking exactly to me. And that's what you want in this personal brand. You want it to feel like you're having a conversation with a friend. You don't want it to feel distant. You don't want it to feel out of reach. It has to feel authentic. It has to feel approachable. The second step in starting to create and curate this personal brand, you need to show up consistently. Trying to create a personal brand is very, very hard when you are inconsistent with your marketing and your messaging efforts. And remember, I've said before, a feast and famine marketing effort gives feast and famine results. It is the same with a personal brand. So you might be consistent for a period of time and people start to look for you. They're starting to watch your content, see what you're about, and then you disappear. The unfortunate thing is, depending on how long these people have been in your world, they could potentially forget you exist while you're disappeared for a little while and then you pop back up. But because you haven't been consistent, you're not showing up in their feed, you're not showing up in their content. So consistency is just as important with your branding as it is with your marketing. And these things are one and the same, they link. The other way you need to be consistent with your brand is by being authentic. I think it's very, very important to show up as yourself. You need to use images of you that are recent that show who you really are. Think about it as if you were on a date. Let's say you were going on a date with somebody and you've seen pictures of them on a dating app and you go and meet them and they don't look like the picture. You are disappointed. You feel a little bit like you've been ripped off. Doesn't sit well. You don't feel right. Same situation when you have a client come to work with you and you're using profile pictures, branding images of you that might be 10 years old. You don't look exactly like that anymore and they can be a bit taken aback. We want clients to be comfortable. We want clients to be relating to us. They can't do that if you haven't authentically shown who you are. For the same reason, I don't think you want to be over filtering your images. I think you need to be as authentic and real as you are comfortable being. On imagery, when it comes to your personal brand, this comes back to what you're using in your marketing content as well, and not just the pictures of yourself. I see a lot of entrepreneurs who focus their marketing around using lovely stock pictures, and it might be pictures of some lovely person working at a desk, a person walking along the beach, a family having a great time in the park. Those images might be great, but if that's all you're using, when does your audience have a chance to see who you are? How are they going to learn what you're about if they never see your face? So I think one of the best investments you can make and that you should make sooner rather than later is to hire a photographer. One of the best investments you can make and that you should make sooner rather than later when you start your business is investing in a personal branding shoot. Now, these don't have to be thousands of dollars. You can have a shoot, a short mini shoot that can only be $100, $200 if you need it to be budget conscious. So there are some very, very affordable options out there if you have a look around. I do find entrepreneurs put off doing this thinking it's going to work out to be thousands of dollars, but it really isn't. So I'd investigate that. It's an important part of building your business. It's very, very hard to market your business and build your personal brand if you don't have any photographs of yourself to be sharing. Now, number three, step number three in building your personal brand comes down to your messaging. You need to start expanding your messaging beyond what you sell and what you do. If we want people to get to know us, we have to share things about ourselves. If everything that you're sharing in your messaging is about your products and services, how is somebody getting to know you? They're not. 
So they can't align with you. They can't be loyal to you if we don't know who you are and what you're about. You could share your personal values, what you stand for. Could you share your quirks? Could you share your hobbies and the things that you love to do? What makes you unique? What are you on a soapbox about? What makes you really passionate and fired up? Are you interested in children's health and you advocate for children's health? Do you have a history of trauma and now you advocate for women that have been through trauma? Is it that you are a busy mum juggling all the things and you also have a professional tap dancing career on the side? Whatever it is that makes you unique, start to share that and start to allow your audience to see that side of you because that's another element that they can connect with. This helps build your audience faster and builds a more loyal audience that will stay with you longer term. The next layer on top of building your personal brand, everyone says to me, Cass, what about my logo? What about my colors? What about my font? That all does play a part within your personal brand, but it's not the major part. So I wouldn't spend as much time as many people do developing the logo, developing the colors, developing the website, the messaging, the value statements, how you are going to stand up and be seen and the images that you're using to do it are actually a much more important component. But I know everybody asks me, Cass, what about my logo? So let's dive into that really quickly. When it comes to things like your logo, tagline, and that side of branding, it has to align with you. So if you are predominantly serving a female audience, you wouldn't have a logo that looks extremely masculine. If you are serving a mature female audience, you wouldn't have a logo that is bright pink or baby pink that's going to align more with a younger demographic. So it needs to be a blend of you and the things that you like and what represents you, but it also needs to be something that your ideal clients will align with because they don't want to look at a logo or a brand and think, gee, that's not for me. So it has to be a blend of both of those things. The other question that I'm getting a lot lately on personal branding is, Cass, do I need a tagline? What's my tagline? Now, taglines are completely up to you. Back in the 1980s, back in the 1990s, corporate marketing, taglines were everything. Everyone had a tagline. And now a lot of businesses still have a tagline. I don't think every personal brand needs one because you're standing up with your values, your morals, you're on your soapbox, you're showing what you're here for. Do you need a tagline? No, you don't. Your offers might need a tagline and that could work there. And remembering your offers, the products, the services that you have, they can be brands within their own right. There you have it. That's today's episode on building out your personal brand and where to start. It is something that will build over time as you get consistent with your messaging, your marketing, and the way that you're showing up for your audience, your brand will build itself. But the key here is being consistent, knowing your messaging, knowing what you want to share, and doing so in a way that is relatable to your audience. I hope you've got some great tips out of this shorter episode today on building your personal brand. Now, right now, I still have doors open on my new mastermind, The Elevation Code, and I have a couple of places left. It's almost sold out, but there are a couple of places left. If you would like to talk to me about that, let's jump on a call. I'll put the link in show notes and we can have a chat about this mastermind and if it's right for you. I look forward to seeing you all again next week on the next episode. Thank you for being here. Thanks for listening to Empowered Marketing Unleashed with me, Cass Duffhill. If you would like to get a hold of my free guide to content that connects, go to cassduffhill.com backslash connect and let's get you creating marketing that works. Thanks for being here. See you on the next episode.